Hello and welcome to the FameLab International Results Show, uh, where we will get to announce the 10 finalists who will be competing for the title of FameLab International Champion. You may have noticed I am not Quentin Cooper. No, Quentin hosted the semi-finals, he was due to host the finals, but sadly uh, he is unwell, so I have been drafted in. My name is Greg Foote, I'm a science presenter and producer on TV and radio, I'm a podcaster and a YouTuber and a science communication trainer. Um, absolute pleasure to be involved. I've been doing stuff with FameLab for quite a while, uh, especially with FameLab Academy with uh, a load of youngsters um, and also with FameLab UK as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to hosting the FameLab International Final on Thursday the 26th of November. Let's find out who will be competing in it, shall we? Uh, and joining me to announce that is... Hello, my name is Marika Navin. I'm the Head of Programming for the Cheltenham Science Festival and Cheltenham Science Festival is where the FameLab competition was created. And I also did FameLab myself many years ago, so I'm a FameLab alumna as well. FameLab is all about finding and supporting the world's newest and best science communicators. And we run it internationally in partnership with the British Council. Now, talking about science in a way that engages a non-scientific audience is so important because it helps people to understand the world around them. These finalists have all shown they can do that brilliantly and I'm sure they're going to be leaders in whichever field they choose. I personally have my eye on them as potential new speakers for the Cheltenham Science Festival. I bet you do. Right, so who will be joining us at the FameLab International Final? Well, let's have a little look back at the semi-finals first, shall we? Oh, they're good, aren't they? Great props as well there. Um, so in last week's two semi-finals, we had performances from 20 countries around the world, 20 national finalists who each performed their three-minute talk to our judges and to all of you watching. There are only 10 places in the international final, which means that sadly, we're gonna have to say goodbye to half of those national finalists. How on earth are we gonna do that, Marika? Well, the decision lies in the hands of the judges and the viewers of the semi-finals. So, the judges from each semi-final were asked to pick four participants to go through to the final. And then the audience also got to choose their favourite from each semi-final by voting online. So in total, we're going to have 10 participants going through to the final. Okay, so four judges' picks from each semi-final plus uh, your vote, the audience winner from each semi-final, gives us 10 for the international final. Let's start by having a look at what the judges thought about each of our semi-finalists. Everyone made a huge effort and uh, we were very impressed with the variety of the talks, the, 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 the uh, presentation skills of the contestants and uh, you know their enthusiasm and also taking into account this happened in an online setting which probably made it a bit more difficult for them um, so overall amazing experience i really really enjoyed this experience although it was incredibly difficult because the quality of all the talks was so high and i was just so impressed with how inventive people were given the difficult circumstances of having to do these talks not in front of an audience it's so much harder to be engaging when you haven't got that 
audience to bounce off and sort of waiting for laughs and things like that, you know. So I thought everyone did so well at managing. I've really enjoyed this experience. The 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 variety of, of science that they that they all conveyed, the way they used their bodies, their voice, their props, the enthusiasm. I, I just I think I'm completely bowled over and they've made our job absolutely dreadful, quite frankly. I, I've always loved FameLab prior to this as an audience member, really. Um, uh, so this was, it was really interesting to, to not be an audience member, to actually be looking with a really critical head on. And, and it was very impressive. And it was very impressive for, for two reasons that, that, that I felt. Firstly, um, the fact that while for the vast majority of the, of the you know, competitors, the participants, English was not their first language, they did their presentations in English. I mean, we're so spoilt as Anglophones. That's the first thing that 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 um, that really, really impressed me, and how good the presentations were. And the second thing, which was very interesting to my mind, were the fact that while they were in a specific institution at a specific country, a large number of them were from another country. So if you actually if you added which country they came from and then their initial nationality which they which they then started with what i really felt was that you know in this time of in this world that we're currently living in that the real international mix both where they are both where they came from was i found it inspiring and i had a really great day yeah i've been i started judging famelab egypt years and years ago um, when it's when FameLab Egypt first started and I did it for a few years and then when I moved out of Egypt I wasn't able to continue judging there and um, and I did one of the finals um, in Cheltenham um, here in the UK a few years ago as well and so it's been a few years since I've judged FameLab and I was so excited to be able to come back um, it's 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 been really really interesting today because the the talks were interesting we got the kind of content and clarity and charisma that we were looking for um it, it was for people that like giles said from all over the world um we learned a lot of new information so i really really enjoyed it and i enjoyed um working with the judges as well for me fame lab is always a, a joy i've been involved now since 2007 in, in in some way or other and it's lovely to see people being enthusiastic to see their talent shine through. And the only bad thing about the day, really, I mean, I've been asked to say what my favorite point of the day is, but actually my least favorite point of the day is when we have to make a decision about who goes through and who doesn't go through. That it, 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 it's not a, a comfortable position to be in, as uh, someone who's been through the process myself, it's not a comfortable position to be in to have to say we can only take four people through because they actually the the, the, the level of talent, of enthusiasm, um, is shines through in all of these presentations. And I, if it was me, I would I would put them all through without hesitation. Are you, are you blaming Giles and me for for not putting them all through? Well, if it was me, I'd put them all through. <laughs> That's exactly, you see, that's what I thought he said to, wait a minute. I blame them, I blame them. <laughs> yeah, Martin blaming you lot for being too good. Okay, right, let's start with the first semi-final, which was on Wednesday, and we had contestants from Egypt and Germany and Greece, from Italy, Korea and the Netherlands, from Qatar, South Africa, Thailand and the UK. So... In no particular order, let's find out who the judges picked. A talk that really impressed me was one that used lots of props, that you that was really engaging, uh, had a lot of quite complicated science in it, explained very, very clearly, and was really quite funny as well. And so the person going through is Guy Yong Boo from South Korea. The next person that really impressed us with their talk was somebody who had an incredible depth of content, really strong pace, lots of really exciting science, dealt with the question supremely well and had a high level of enthusiasm and energy all the way through. 
She was amazing. Can I just give it all up for Pinky from South Africa? So a talk that impressed me was one that was very, very inventive with the use of the screen and the use of props and um, made me laugh a lot and the person was great at answering the questions that we asked them and a topic that I found really fascinating as well. So the person to go through is Ahmed from Qatar. The talk that really impressed me and really stood out was, was one that covered a whole depth and range of science from its evolution to where it is now and, and where its place is in history, all in perfect rhyme. Incredible use of rhyming words, incredible use of her body. And the next person to go through is Rebecca from the UK. Congratulations! <laughs> yes! Gayam from Korea, Pinky from South Africa, Ahmed from Qatar, and Rebecca from the UK. Congratulations to all four of you. You each have a place in the final. Marika, what do you think about our four finalists? Well, Greg, the judges clearly had a really difficult decision, but if I just had to summarise, I would say Gayam in particular had a really great charisma, um, a really great interaction with the camera. Similarly, Pinky, really energetic, really vibrant attitude. I would say Rebecca, it was her content that really sort of touched my heart and connected with me emotionally. And Akhmad was super clear, uh, a really great use of demos. And Greg, if you don't mind, I'd just like to give a sort of personal shout out to um, Lisa, I haven't been able to stop talking about her presentation. I've been telling everybody this idea of using, you know, a virtual reality avatar of yourself, you know, your future self to come and give your give yourself advice. It just blew my mind. Yeah, that was such a great idea. So yeah, well worth a mention. We therefore have our first four finalists. Who's going to be joining them? Well, let's move on to our second semi-final, which of course was on Thursday. Uh, three different judges had to choose their favourite four from Australia, the Czech Republic and Brazil, Bulgaria, Kazakhstan and Malaysia, Switzerland, Hungary and Ireland and Spain. And again, in no particular order, let's find out who the judges picked. The first of our finalists really um amazed us with this technology. It was kind of like using a vacuum cleaner. Negative pressure was used, but it was a vacuum cleaner in order to actually help burns victims. So our first finalist is, what sounded like a North American, but representing Australia, Cody. Our next finalist gave us a, a really interesting introduction to a microcosm of a global problem. What he talked about was a small part of a global problem, which was the destruction of environments, particularly forest environments. And the particular environment that he was talking about, a coastal environment, very important to me because my house is only a couple of meters above sea level. Um, and so really interesting talk about the protective effect of mangrove forests from Ateles of Malaysia. The next finalist did a really interesting presentation using their props really well and they were engaging from beginning to end and the narrative was very relatable to a general audience. The next finalist is Shuradeep from Switzerland. Our next choice for the final gave a talk under difficult circumstances, um, which was a model, I thought, of clarity and pace. Absolutely to the point, an important subject. Um, and the next choice is Shokista from Kazakhstan. Yes, huge congratulations, another trio of party poppers. 
covered the camera. <laughs> so that's Cody representing Australia, Ataleth from Malaysia, Shuradeep representing Switzerland, and Shakista from Kazakhstan. Congratulations to all four of you. You each have a place in the final. Again, Marika, what do you think of them all? So again, Greg, the judges had another really difficult decision, but if I just had to summarise, I would say that for Ataleth, it was really about the content, you know, that story about the mangroves and the tsunami um, just really touched me. I think Cody was really clear. He made what's a really difficult topic, you know, burns in children, you know, really shocking and difficult. Um, much, much more accessible and easier to understand with that link to the Teletubbies. I thought that was really clever. Um, Shura Deep's talk left me wanting to find out more and I always think that's a great outcome, you know, at the end of a FameLab talk, if you leave wanting to know more. And then um, Shakita covered such a complex area but used really direct and simple language to communicate it, so really clear. Um, and that research, you know, is potentially going to impact so many people in the future. Oh, they're all so good. So hard to choose. But yes, four worthy finalists. So four plus four, eight. Now we've got finalists in the international final. Two places left. And those are going to come from the audience vote, from your vote, aren't they, Marika? Yeah, and Greg, this is the first time, actually, that the audience favourite gets a guaranteed place in the final. And, you know, from our perspective, behind the scenes, it was so exciting seeing the votes come in. Over 7,000 votes from 75 countries all over the world. So it was brilliant knowing that people from all over the world were watching the semi-finals and taking part. Wow, so many of you voted. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. And we can now reveal that your favourites from each semi-final, who also have their places in the international final, are... Mahmoud from Egypt and Gabriella from Brazil. Congratulations! One party popper each. Yeah, so I just want to say well done to all our amazing semi finalists. They all just represented their countries absolutely brilliantly. I have no doubt they are going to continue doing wonderful science and to communicate it fantastically. So that's it, folks. There are your 10 finalists, which means you just need to come join us live 4 p.m. GMT on Thursday, the 26th of November for the FameLab International Final 2020, where you'll get to see 10 brand new talks from those world-class scientists. You will get to vote for the audience favourite. The judges will crown the international champion. And I think it's only right if we leave you with the stars of the upcoming show. Here are our 10 international finalists.